As late as 2011, there were more than 4,000 Sears locations. However, by December 2023, the number had decreased to just 12. I visited three of these remaining stores, and examining the map, it's puzzling to see how this decline occurred. In 1886, Richard Sears was just 22 and working at a train station in Minnesota. Life took a surprising turn when he got to buy a bunch of gold watches that a local jeweler didn't want. He bought them cheap and sold them for a small profit. That small deal quickly made him $5,000. Excited by his success, he quit his railroad job and moved to Chicago. There, he teamed up with Elva Roebuck, a watch repairman. Together, they started Sears, Roebuck, and Company in 1893. They sent out a big catalog that offered all kinds of products to people living in rural areas. This catalog was a big deal. People didn't have to travel far or pay high store prices. But Sears didn't stop there. They saw a chance to make homes affordable. They sold kits with everything you needed to build your house. Starting at just $1.450, these kits were part of the early DIY trend, long before it became popular on TV. Every house has a story. We're the Burks. And our house came from a Sears catalog. Our house is the Martha Washington. Various models of Sears homes were available in both wood siding and brick veneer finishes, often under different names despite having the same or nearly identical floor plans. Some of the most popular models included the Alhambra, the Argyle, the Avondale, the Barrington, and the Conway, which was also referred to as the Uriel. From selling watches to building homes, Sears changed how America shopped and lived. Many of the homes built from those kits are still around today, showing how big an impact Sears had back then. At the turn of the 20th century, Sears Roebuck and Company boasted sales over $400,000, equivalent to about $11.2 million today. The company made a historic move by going public, rapidly raising over $40 million, now valued at just over $1 billion. This was a milestone in American financial history. In 1908, leadership shifted from R.W. Sears to Julius Rosenwald, who spearheaded significant expansions, including a large distribution plant in Chicago. However, the Great Depression severely impacted Sears, with Rosenwald's fortune keeping the company afloat. Despite these challenges, Sears transitioned from catalog to retail, opening its first store in 1925. By 1930, it introduced the Sears Wish Book, a Christmas catalog that became a beloved tradition, further entrenching Sears in American households. Before the 1980s, Sears was more than just a store. Everything they sold was top-notch and built to last. People bought nearly everything from Sears and trusted their brands. For many, their first credit card was a Sears Charge card, memorable for its unique shorter shape and gold lettering. This card lets you buy on credit either in the store or through their catalog. Sears also played a big role in creating the Discover card through its Dean Witter Financial Division, introducing the first no-fee cashback credit card. The best time to receive the catalog was during Christmas. The Sears Christmas Wish Book became a holiday tradition in many homes with kids eagerly flipping through the pages, circling their favorite toys and folding corners to mark their holiday wishes. As soon as you walked into Sears, the smell of popcorn hit you. For any kid, that scent was an instant pull toward the popcorn and candy counter for a treat before the real shopping began. Remember how they used a giant scale and a metal scoop to measure out the candy? That little ritual kept us kids content while our parents tackled their shopping list until, of course, we reached the toy section. Walking into the electronic section at Sears was always impressive. Rows of the latest and greatest TVs would draw you in alongside shelves packed with the newest radios. Sears was known for its Silvertone Electronics, a popular brand that started back in 1916 with phonographs. Over the years, Silvertone expanded to include not just radios but also musical instruments. 
Another big hit for Sears was its range of cordless phones featuring nearly every model you could think of. This section was a showcase of all the cutting-edge technology Sears had to offer. Sears was a top player in the appliance market, initially featuring the Cold Spot brand, known for its reliable refrigerators, freezers, and air conditioning units. By the 1970s, Cold Spot gave way to the Kenmore brand, which expanded to include sewing machines, vacuum cleaners, and washing machines. Kenmore soon became a household name, synonymous with durability, and was used on nearly all major appliances like washers, dryers, ovens, and refrigerators. Renowned for its longevity, Kenmore helped cement Sears's reputation in home appliances. If ever there was an issue, Sears backed up its products with a service fleet. In the 1960s, their aqua-colored vans easily recognized as Sears vehicles were a common sight ready to fix. Any problem right at your doorstep. Do you recall going into Sears and making your way to the top floor where cashiers would be ready to take customer payments? There was a special treat for the kids a coin-operated cartoon booth in the waiting area. It would play cartoons like Heckle and Jekyll, Woody Woodpecker, and Mighty Mouse, keeping the kids entertained while their parents took care of the bills. If it wasn't the aroma of popcorn that greeted you first at Sears, it likely was the scent of new tires. The Sears Auto Center used to be the top spot for car maintenance. Sears offered a full range of sporting goods, catering to almost every sport imaginable. A standout feature was their Ted Williams collection, which included baseball gloves, bats, and other sports equipment adorned with Williams' signature. Another popular item in the sporting goods section was the Free Spirit Bicycles. These basic road bikes were often the first bike for many kids, becoming a neighborhood staple. The toy section at Sears was a magical place, usually the final stop on a shopping trip. Brightly colored packages and signs announcing Toy Town signaled that you had arrived in a wonderland of toys. By 2010, Sears wasn't making money anymore. By 2017, they had drastically reduced the number of stores, and in 2018, they had to file for bankruptcy. They tried to keep things going but ended up closing many more stores and selling off famous brands like Craftsman, Kenmore, and Die Hard. Now, there are barely a dozen Sears stores left. For the younger folks, Sears might not mean much, but for those who remember the good old days, it's a nostalgic part of American history. If you found this trip down memory lane interesting, why not stick around? Click on the next video and keep the journey going with us. Thanks for watching.